Well, good afternoon, everybody, again. We're at um, Pierce Cedar Creek Institute today through Grand Rapids Community College uh, Biodiversity Boutiques, and we are here to look at the scientific methodology, the scientific method. We're going to do a few experiments uh, with some of my students from Biology 204, and we're also going to go next door after this to look at some of the things that we've done during the course of the week. So we want you to ask lots of questions, and I'm going to turn it over to my three students here who will introduce themselves. Uh, they'll tell you what they want to be when they grow up. And <laughs> not exactly, but you will tell us what you're going to do, your name and that sort of thing, and then we will proceed from there. Okay, so we've got a lot of fun today. I hope you guys really enjoy it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'm Marie, and I am International Development Major and Environmental Studies. Hi, I'm Alicia. I want to go into zoology and be like Dr. Matt, only study a different kind of animal. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cassidy. I'm here because I'm in the pre-vet program, so I plan on transferring to Michigan State. Okay, what I first need you guys to do is I need you to draw a circle on your sheet. And we're going to be working with termites today. Okay, and now we're going to have Alicia and Cassidy go around and put a couple termites on each sheet. Bruce just wants to watch. You're going to pull it out and tell us about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which one? I don't know much about No, I want you guys just to mm, observe what they're doing. Say, what do you think this is? What is it? You know what it eats? You know the name? Yeah, yeah. What else do you need to know? Huh? What else do you need to know? You want to touch him? <laughs> yeah. Try it. Feel, feel free to, once the termites are on there and you see them doing what they're going to do, feel free to draw on the paper and see what else they'll do. Do you not have enough? So what do you see them doing? Yep. Okay, so what did you guys observe is going on? Can somebody say, okay, what did you do? Yeah, yeah, and that's observation. Now, um, now you guys all draw, drew other circles and squares and all that other stuff? Did they follow them? Yeah. Why do you think that is? Yeah, that's right. Now, that would be a new experiment that you could do. What do you, how do you think you could do that? What other kind of things would you try? What do you think would happen if you used pencil? Did you use pencil over here? 
did try pencil. They didn't go on it at all. They didn't? No. Nope. Yup. They stayed off the circle with the pencil. They don't like pencil. Now, guys, what do you think would happen if we used a different type of pen? Any ideas at all? I asked him about pencil. No, what kind of what kind of experiments do you think you could do? To prove that that is the reason. Yeah. Yeah. And you could try pencils and marker. Maybe a type of paint would work too. So what do you guys think it is that they're following in the pen? Yeah. Now what about the chemicals? Do they like? It could be their taste, or it could be perhaps their sense of smell. They're smelling the chemicals. So what did you first do? When you got these pieces of paper, what did you first do? You did you what yeah? Yeah, you what you watch them follow the circle, right? So that's observation. And then what did you do? Were you curious? You wondered why? Mm -hmm. That's called the questioning part of the scientific method. So you observed, and then you questioned, and then what did you do? Did you think, well, what if I drew more lines? Right? So you experimented more. They're so excited. <laughs> They're actually really sweet. Pardon? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It would go <laughs> and it would go back and forth. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Oh, look, did you Bruce. see he was following your name? <laughs> hey, Bruce. Look what they did. They put two dots, <laughs> and then they saw that they like would go around the dot, and then they would go back and forth between the dots. Oh, cool! Yeah, cool. like a mirror. Yeah. For my mirror. Hey guys, I have a quick question for all of you. If you could please listen up. Why do you think that following the line on the paper is adaptive for termites? What's important about them following that line? Very good. Exactly. So they're following the scent of the line, which may lead them to food, correct? Very good. What do you think is in the pen that makes them want to do that? Because I know over here they tried with pencil, but that didn't work. <coughs> mm. <laughs> Very interesting. Can't smell the pencil. Very good. So do you think that's it? You can't smell the pencil? Do you think that has all that's all that has to do with it? Like just smell? Do you think it's it's any of the other senses that they have? What senses do they think smells like? Yeah. Feel. Feel. Well, they yeah. Like yep. Yeah, yep. exactly. Sight. Sight. Taste. Yep, they they can taste it as well. Dark in the wood, they have to feel where they're going. <laughs> <laughs> so, do, does anybody know where termites live? Do they live by themselves or do they live in a hive? Like, like a hive, like they live in a colony? So, if you were a little termite and you were walking around. Yeah. Do you think they're very social with each yeah. other? Do you think they're social? Social or do they live by themselves? Are they like people? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think they make their own paths, or do they follow the termites in front of them? Follow the termites in front of them. Follow them Very in front good. of them? <laughs> so their sense is how they communicate with each other, because they can't talk, right? 
<laughs> all all their senses. <laughs> yeah, that we know of. They may talk to each other. We can't hear it. <laughs> Let's eat this house down. <laughs> yeah, do you guys know what termites eat? Wood. Yeah, yep. very good. <laughs> wood, wood, wood. They eat, they eat the wood as food. Termites eat wood to digest wood, to make digest wood. I don't even know. I don't know. <laughs> Tell us, Dr. Matt. They actually don't do that themselves. They have little tiny microorganisms inside of them that help them digest the wood. You can tell you once it's really tough, and they can't break those. It's kind of amazing that they eat wood all day long, and yet they don't really break it down themselves. Kind of like a cow eating grass, Kind of like a cow with a rumen. Dude. Ruminating stomachs. <laughs> so we have a really good yes. here of a pencil that doesn't work because it doesn't have the right smell apparently, right? <laughs> yeah. And the ink seems to work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ask her. Should we collect the termites before they do that? Um, hey guys, we have one more thing that we want you to do. So take your pens and make a little square with a lot of ink on it. So make a little square and color it in with as much ink as you can get on that square. And then smell it. And tell me what it smells like to you. <laughs> oh, they're warming up. Did you see them moving? <laughs> <laughs> I love this project. Hey John, this one no. I need to what? Oh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for this guy hanging over. I've actually never seen him watching. Yeah. So what I can say. No, you can do this. Well, but how about the rest of them? No one has been doing that. How about I take the only one that I know and have been receptive to it? So, what does a square smell like, guys? <coughs> kind of like wood? <laughs> yep, boat exhaust. So, would that be that strong smell? Could that be the reason why the termites are following up? We got the Humane Society over here, too. It smells like the Humane Society. <laughs> Very smelly. What did you three think it smelled like? So, did you guys like the smell? No. You guys didn't like it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you guys. <laughs> but the termites like the smell, right? Apparently they do. Yeah, apparently they do like the smell. Okay, we have to segue back to Caterpillar. To Professor. So, hey everybody, we have something else for you if you would like to listen up to Dr. Matt. First, we're gonna get rid of. We're gonna take all of your termites and put them back in their homes. <laughs> so now, while they're taking care of the termites, we're going to uh, we're going to show you some of the things that we've done at Pierce Cedar Creek here. And I did want to remind you that Pierce Cedar Creek Institute's only 40 miles south of Grand Rapids, just south of Hastings. So that if our viewers want to come down here, it's free to come down here. If you want to stay overnight and have dinner, breakfast, lunch here, you can Did do you that. Smell it? But it's free. So while you guys are cleaning up your termites, so to speak, it sounds kind of strange, but we're going to show you a few of the insects that we've got here at Pier Cedar Creek. Uh, we are obviously in May. It's raining today, but um, these are some of the insects we've caught over the course of the week here. We have dragonflies and beetles and butterflies. So we have a pretty good collection of. of well, at least insect animals here. But we've got one more experiment that John's going to help me with. I'm going to introduce John. John, come over here. Okay, John. Um, John is going to help us uh, do caterpillar rap music, right? We we're hoping. Uh, let me let me introduce this, and then I'll turn it over to you, and we'll see how it works. No First problem. of all, I want I want to uh, show you the diet that. Um, Dr. Taylor from the University of Kansas and Monarch Watch sent me with this artificial diet. It's not really milkweed at all. It's a very proprietary diet, so we can't let it a secret. 
You know, when I, was, when I was in college, we made diets out of lima beans and the essential oils from plants, but this is even a more different diet. And so the caterpillars are, are sent to you in these little cups. There's three of them. And then after they molt once or twice, you need to put them on real milkweed. So uh, in grade schools, like you guys are in, you can actually get these, and they will be emerging as butterflies before you leave school, so you can release them. And they're very inexpensive, but this is the diet they come in. And just in the course of this week, these have grown from little caterpillars to some pretty big caterpillars. And in another week, they will be making pupa. And then, of course, another week after that, they'll be adults. So like I said, just when you guys are leaving school, these guys would be emerging. They would be flying farther north, we think, to repopulate the butterfly range that they would normally inhabit. So does anybody remember where these were coming from? They were overwintering mm -hmm. in this place. Mm -hmm. Anybody remember? Wait. The monarch butterflies. Where were they in the winter? Mexico? In Mexico. So they were in a state called Michoacan, which is virtually the same name as Michigan. <laughs> the land of lakes down in Michoacan. And they, they stay there by the hundreds of millions over the course of the winter. And then they mate and they start flying north and all those butterflies die. But they might have lived eight months. And now they're coming generation by generation north. So I've already seen wild monarchs out here last week. So I know they're here. They're mo virtually all females that are laying eggs on the milkweed, which has just popped up. But these are from, I think they're probably from Kansas, I'm guessing. But I really don't know where they're from. But they're from the eastern part of the United States. And already you can see how huge some of these things are. Well, the other day we were talking, and we just happened to notice something. I, I don't know if they're going to perform today, because you know how that works. <laughs> but um, we, we noticed that when we passed them and did something, they would jerk their whole bodies. So we're, we're going to try to show you this with John's expertise. Now, John, you want to set that up and tell us how you're going to do this? Well, basically, I noticed the other day, I, I was kind of being a little weird. I would try to go and talk to the caterpillars, and I just said, hey. And sure enough, I got a response. They, uh, they twitched their head. So we're going to try that again today. I can't guarantee anything. So I don't know. Should we just get them in groups up here so they can actually see it? Uh, can you guys see back there? No. OK, you want to come up here? Well, uh, like or do groups of five? Or, yeah. Why don't we do that? And then you're going to bring your voice. Oh, yeah. No, okay. no, I'm just going to sit you Bring your voice. OK, now. He's gonna, can you All see right. that? Okay, if you can watch, you're going to see there. You see how they're twitching their antlers. I'm not guaranteeing it. Towards me just a bit. My bad, my bad. That's good. Hey, hey. I oh, see they're, they're pretty stage fright right now. Hey, hey. Oh, I'll now do your other sound. Which one? <laughs> yeah, that, see, <laughs> that, that's the little rapping part we do. Yeah, see, they're, they're not really now, receptive today. This is kind of interesting. I'll get another group here. I'll put these right here. Hang on a second. Yeah, you guys try can study again. those ones. You guys try. Yeah, try see what you guys can do. Well, you'd be surprised. If you see their little receptors twitch, that's when you know you're getting a little good pair of them. So let's try this. Hey! See, oh, they're oh. starting to move. Hey! Hey! You know what? They are not doing it. Now that presents us with a problem, doesn't it? Yes, we kind of look like buffoons. Is, isn't this an observation, you guys? They're not doing... Yesterday they were doing this. They are going like this with that. They're going, wing, you know, wing. Every time we said something, they would all do it together. They would bob their heads. I swear that happened. Now... Well, maybe no one there's would believe me, but John saw that, and the rest of the students saw that. So here's my question, then. Hey. If they did it yesterday, hey. why aren't they doing it today? What's different between hey. yesterday and today? Anybody? They're obviously eating the same food plant. They're in the same container, under the same conditions. The weather. They had the, the weather. Okay, Try, I got one of That's them That's a pretty Try good watching idea. This guy so right what would be different about today's hey. weather? A. Hey. Oh, wow. I well, guess tell me like in me. words. It must be something, yes. Oh, yeah, you just, uh, just touch them a little it gently. It was very They're sunny all yesterday and very dry, and today you is very humid. Is that a possibility? Okay. What else do you think? What else would be different? You guys try again. Maybe, maybe, they, maybe it's just Anything? Me. Give them a good I mean, shout. I honestly don't know. We were just doing oh, this yesterday you, you as can a do joke. It. You can do it, too. And we thought we'd bring it in, and of course well, it never works when you want to show it. but. Yo, yo. There, that one did it. See it? They were doing. That could be a factor of why they're not doing it. 
Well, maybe it's a language barrier, you think, John? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> molting. Oh, yes, molting oh, yeah. is, could be a big factor. Could be that. Do any of you guys know what molting is? Anyone? Any they know. Just shout it. Everyone can shout. Everyone knows what it is then. There you go. They're getting too big for their casing right now, so they have to molt. Then maybe when you molt, you have to be quiet. Hey. So maybe nothing's going to disturb hey. you. But can anybody hey. think of an idea why, by, why jerking your body might be a good idea if you're a caterpillar and you're not molting? Yeah, I'll bring a, one of these over to another. Might you scare something off so. like a bird or Since maybe a reptile or whatever else could eat it, right? <laughs> There's, that's, this one's jerking here. Yeah, no you worries. Do you, do you guys want to hold one? Yeah. I'm going to pass them around. Now, when you hold a caterpillar, you just got to pull off real fast. You see, they're curled up in a ball. Very, they're, they're very you can actually make them drop off the plant if you breathe on them. So if I breathe, I, don't, I won't do it because they'll fall on the floor. But this one? That one? Hey. The guy on the right, right there. Can you guys get hey. one of them? Maybe you guys can do it. We'll pass these around hey. and you guys can look at them. Oh, no. <laughs> Here, take this one. There you go. That's what we say, He'll caterpillar right. down. That's what they didn't want to do. Here, you guys. I'll pass these over here. You want to pick those? Get those? I'll Thank bring you. some around. You guys go. Here you go. <laughs> Maybe you guys get some luck. I, this you one just was doing it. You guys can hold a caterpillar. You can't hurt them, so don't worry about it. Hey, good. Hey. You do it. Hey. Hey. Okay. Okay. I'll try. Oh, uh, we got we got hand sanitizer out there. No worries. Good. Loud. You, you did it loudly. Hey. It's the container. You think? It could be in the container, you Here, guys. You want you want me to get you one? Hey. Nothing. Hey. Nothing. They're too scared. <laughs> this will be great on the video, though, you know. There you go. Just wait a second and it'll unfold. He's, this is what they do as a defense mechanism. <laughs> I, maybe it's the echo. Hey. No, we tried it earlier. Yes, we had one earlier on this branch, so maybe if you guys not are Not very lucky. well, not like yesterday. No. See, the thing is... Yeah, I don't know. Complete mystery to me. Could be the echo in here, but see, I've, you I've know if you're going like to get one. See, if table, you see those, you know the if these result. are right there. Sometimes I can snap my fingers and those I'll go... Those black things? Where do they initiate they're they're kind of like antennas. When? Kind of like where? receptors. Right. Oh. And what it is we're thinking is that the Yeah, they actually the have a, like a little suture back itself there. It's triggering it's popping back up. I don't know why the head bob is there, but I noticed that... It's but just when you see them raise twitch, their that's abdomen when they are starting to receive it. Too. But today, and they, they really had any luck. usually they just swallow air and then they kind of pop the cuticle and crawl out. Hey! hey. hey. Yeah, see? I got everybody saying hey. You guys want to hold one? Yeah. And you guys want to hold one? What? You ever seen the, you ever seen the hungry hungry caterpillar? Ni that's a nice guy. You want to you want to hold that one? Just be very, oh, very right. gentle, yeah, I, okay? I to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, oh, I mean, wow, he doesn't want to get you know, full circle on now. Right, right. That's a neat method for this patient. Kathy Winnett Murray. Yeah, yeah, she's in the you know, program. So she, OK, so I probably should do that. Put flat. There you go. Now, wait a second. That's a defense mechanism. Now, how do you want me to say it? She's responsible for the? Yeah, she taught me, and I taught you. OK. Potato bugs. Potato bugs do the same thing. I actually don't know all the people on the board here yet. Oh, wow. he j he's just a little scared right now. No worries. You know what? And you know what kind of caterpillar these are, right? <laughs> there you go. Very good. <laughs> and if you notice, why do you think he's got little receptors on the other end? Do you guys know? This, this is exactly what happens. Yeah, have you ever seen a, Have you ever seen a butterfly's wings? How they got eyes on them? Different bowels on them. 
Yes, it's a deception. So they think maybe that's the real head down no, there please. when really he's right there. Right. Yeah, she's very tackling, you're right. There you go. He's like, oh man, where am I? Oh, hair? he's crawling. Is he doing it? Oh. So some of some of them finally did it? This is about as good as a choir class. <laughs> it could be. See, if you guys notice, yeah. if you can get one to go, you'll But they didn't see. do it at all See these when right we first here? started today. These are what we call receptors. Well, what do you receptors, think, you guys? Want to... We're guessing that it's the, our voices that travel there and will make them do it. So he's switching. Could be. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hey. Hey. See, they're not very, uh, see, yesterday, they, they were just moving their heads like no other. Hey. 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 See him right there? Hey. Hey. See, they're, they're so picky now. Hey. Here we go. I'll try to get them out in the open. Hey. 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 Well, th this one this was twitching. Plan. I can't get him to do it again. What about that one? Yes, sir. If you ever need the fertilizers right here. And it doesn't matter. Hey. 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 See, I'm wondering why though they're not. Do you think? Why do you think they're not moving? And you guys got a good reason why you don't think they're gonna move? Well, see, they'll do that because they know how they navigate. Oh, he's getting away. They don't care what direction. Hey, 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 hey. 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 See, it's so selective. We, we, see, we just had like a colony do it. What's that? They, we had a, a colony warm up to it. Hey. Did you have two of them do it? Hey. Did you really? Hey. Try humming. Hey. Mm, no. That's what we were there doing earlier. Hey. Hey. And then have John do it. And they would do it. Hey. We do a music video. Hey. Yeah, put that on YouTube. Hey. 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 Hey, so you both can see. Hey. I had this little leg on. Hey. 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 Oh, I guess he doesn't like that. Hey. Hey. Do you guys want to hold one? You guys want to hold a caterpillar? Okay. Here you go. Caterpillar girl. Yeah. Here you go. He's gonna curl up, so just give him a second. Oh, no, Did you right? want to hold yeah. one too? Uh, sure. Well, it's good to see that no one's afraid here, right? They've had three years of me. Hey. 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 That one doesn't want to leave. Hey. 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 Well, you guys, what do you think? We did, did we teach him anything today? Did you teach your caterpillars how to respond? Well, we're gonna go around and pick up the caterpillars. <laughs> We're going to go around and pick up the caterpillars, everybody, because John, John has some fish stories for you. Oh, yes, so fish. Come over here, John. Hey. You're next. Okay, well, Dr. Matt will come through in a little bit. You guys can still hold them. Okay. <laughs> All right, I got, I got the thing. It's going to be a hard act to follow, you know. Yeah, I know. You know what? You know what's funny is that they're trying new sounds. We haven't done that no, yet. No, I know. That's the beauty of the children. The funny thing is, it sounds like a, a probably a third grade choir class. <laughs> 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 
So why do you guys over here think they're not gonna move their heads? Oh, they're okay. They don't have to do it. Well, they, oh, he's, that's just, he's looking for a new place to go. But do you guys have an actual reason okay. why you think they're not moving? Why they're not doing a head bob? They just feel like maybe they're tired. It's just cellulose. Yeah. I, well, when, when they can get chicken pox, that'll be uh, pretty neat. Are you on? They're going to wash their hands real quick. Oh, no fish today. All right. Well, that was very successful, you guys. Yes. You tried a lot more sounds than I ever thought of, that's for sure. Okay, well, we've gone from termites to monarch caterpillars, and now we're going to go to John, Agent John, and his fish stories. I don't know if you can believe everything he's going to say, but maybe you can, I don't know. So go ahead, John, tell us everything you know. Let's just say I love fishing. How many of you guys here have gone fishing before? Raise your hands. Oh, this is perfect. So everyone has caught a fish here before. So if you could just click to the first page. All right, well, everyone, I'm pretty sure when they went fishing has caught, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on here. We have a problem. No, no, you gotta go back one more. You're fine, one more. One, there you go, okay. Sorry about that. But yes, everyone here has probably caught a fish. If I'm right, when you went fishing, you all got a fish, right? <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. But you know what? Everyone will get one one day. But this is what we call a bluegill. I'll show a picture here. It's just a sunfish, and uh, they like to eat invertebrates and very small fish. If you go to the next page. This is what I'm pretty sure most of you caught, am I right? Your first time going out. They're really good eating. That's why they call them panfish. You can just cook them in a pan. But uh, the reason we call them bluegills is right here on their opercular little flap here. You can tell it's like a bluish black, and that's how you distinguish them from other fish. Like, let's say, will you please go to the next slide? This is like what we call a pumpkin seed. You'll see a picture here, too. I should have just put them on this slide. But uh, the pumpkin seed is also a sunfish. Most uh, game fish are, and they are known for their shape. Their shape is why they're called a pumpkin seed. So can you go to the next slide, please? And that's a pumpkin fish. They're very colorful, and they're kind of like bluegill. I'm pretty sure you guys might have caught one of these, too. All right, and will you please go on next? These are delicious. I mean, everyone loves perch. I don't know a lot of people that don't like eating fish, but that's me. But these fish are in the same family as walleye. These are also another game fish people like to catch. And you can tell that they're a little perch because they get, they're they yellow. The yellow is very distinct, and they got stripes on the fish. We like to call those tiger bass where I'm from because the stripes remind us of tigers. But yeah, that, that's, a, that's a yellow seriously? perch. Okay. Yeah, seriously. Next slide, please. All right, and this is largemouth. This is where everything turns haywire because me and Dr. Matt have made a bet here at the lake where he said he would beat me in a fishing game here. The game was catch the biggest fish. <laughs> well, last year, Ricky had caught a good, I don't know how you want to estimate, about a fish this big. I don't know if you guys have seen a fish this big yet, but that's massive. That's five pounds. That's about as heavy as you guys. I'm just playing. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> Most of these fish are also, like I said, sunfish. This is a very big game fish. And the best way to tell that these are largemouth, well, one, hence the name largemouth. <laughs> They're very big, but the upper lip right here will extend to the eye. And when it reaches the eye, that's how you usually can tell. And they're olive green, and they have the stripe right here. So that's pretty big. And then can you go to the next slide, please? These are just a few pictures of bass that I found, and they're, they're quite cool. That one, well, I'll move out the way for you guys here. You can... Uh, uh, uh. Well, yeah, that one tried eating a little too much of the, uh, took too big of a bite, and that's what he gets. <laughs> Anyways, can you please go to the next slide? And a smallmouth. They're the same species, same, well, same species you could say, and same, ge well, genus, but they're a little different. Smallmouth are also sunfish, another good uh, game fish, but the difference <laughs> is they're brownish tan, and instead of that stripe as the little largemouth had, they're lines in the mouth of course is small so can you go to the next slide oh whoa yeah there it is and uh yeah you can tell right there it's very brown and it's a tan it's a nice tan and instead of that stripe you're gonna see these little markings they're like stri vertical stripes there's a very big difference in the two well you're, you're fine this is the big one this is what this is what distinguishes a true fisherman for me and mr douglas 
I'll oh, tell you that was, now. Was there, was there any trash talk going on before this contest? Um, yes, or? Mr. Douglas, I clearly heard, said uh, he's going to demolish me. And I'm pretty sure he walked away crying and with his tail between his legs. <laughs> so, but uh, pike are typically ambush predators. They will sit and wait for food to come in front of them, and they will attack them. I don't know. You guys ever seen Finding Nemo? And I know I, everyone here has had seen Finding Nemo. <laughs> really? Right? Let me see your hands for this one. Finding Nemo, right? If not, tell your parents to rent it. You'll love it. But in the very beginning, uh, as you can tell, the mom gets killed by a barracuda. You guys know the barracuda, that mean fish in the beginning, right? Well, this is just like the same thing, but a freshwater version. And you can tell because these are green, got spots, and they got these giant teeth like that. So if you can go on the next slide. That's pretty big, okay, that's okay. <laughs> that's nothing, you know what I mean? So you're gonna see someone catch one of the biggest fish you've ever seen in the world. I mean, I'm telling you, it looks a little familiar. Can you click next, please? Right there, look at that fish. <laughs> now, I don't know if that guy looks familiar or not, but I mean, that is a, that's a big <laughs> fish to me. That's about, if you, if you could stand up real quick, scale that out, that's, that's about to there. So, I mean, use your imagination, that thing's pretty big. So I, I didn't realize that that you had a ringer in there fishing for you yesterday. That doesn't not that doesn't look like you. Yeah. There's no hat. You know, I like to use you know a couple of diversions and substitutes, as they say, Asians <laughs> all look alike. So we we kind of get mistaken pretty easily. <laughs> and then uh, I'm pretty sure that is about the last of the, the fish I got. But wait, we got to tell them how big that fish is. I like to say it's about 36 inches. So about three foot or so and about 15 pounds. So that, that's a pretty big fish. I mean, compared to Ricky's five, five pound bass <laughs> like that, I mean, it kind of is a little overwhelming, but doc, like I said, Dr. Matt wasn't too happy to see that. No. He kind of just went to shore right after and cried. Yeah. Went straight to his room under his bed sheets. But other than that, that, that's what I got for fish. These are all common around here and you can find them in most lakes or ponds. And uh, very good. Yes. Okay, now I do want to add one thing. You said that <coughs> you said that, that you caught that fish, but didn't you use an illegal lure to do that? Oh, yeah. Can't we disqualify uh, him for doing that? I think that's yeah, fair, right? A legal we, lure. We I don't, what do you count as illegal? We Tell need me. a committee to check into this to make sure that everything was legal, right? Okay, you can't use worms. Everyone uses worms, the, the real-life worms. So I, I did one up. I used a plastic bait. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Right. Is that, that is illegal? illegal. That's definitely illegal. What do you want me to do? Dig no, we're going to give John, we should give a round of applause for John for catching the biggest fish in that lake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're going to segue from uh, termites to caterpillars to fish stories. Mm -hmm. We're going to go next door, and we have ferns, we have mammal Coaches. footprints, we have flowers of the field, flowers of the forest, we have trees, we have amphibians. And we have a wonderful gentleman from Pennsylvania, from uh, Widener University, uh, Dr. Bruce Grant over here. We're going to call him Dr. Bruce. Bruce and Wayne. Bruce Wayne, we call him now, because he is fearless, and he catches snakes uh, where you guys would fear to tread. And uh, he's got a few bites from yesterday, from no nocturnal ones from the water snakes. So. I think John and uh, Dr. Bruce are going to show you a snake that we had caught earlier today, but we want to show our audience that we actually caught this here at Pier Cedar Creek. So we're going to go next door here real quick, and then we're going to get into the other. Oh, wait, first we have to count off in threes, but we can do that after the. Yeah. So, so we'll go next door, but stay here just for a second, okay? She knows. Yeah, there you go. He looks like a garter snake, but he's not a garter snake. He's actually something called a ribbon snake, and they're very closely related. But the difference is in the scale lines that their stripes are on. Those are too close. They will match. But this one's only two and three for the scale line, and the garter snake will be three and four. So if you count up from the belly scale. And as you can see, he's a lot smaller. He's actually very big for his for being a male of his species. Females are usually this big. But you can see his tail is thicker, right? And not quite as thin. As hers gets thinner, his gets thicker, right? So if you want, you can pet him right here. 
This one's so sandy. Well, yeah, they got him out of the sand. And you can pet her, too. She's got a pretty good hold of her. Okay, if you want to learn something real quick, do you see how she's shedding by my thumb? Mm -hmm. You want to know how you can tell a shake is shedding. Oh, wow, shake. <laughs> a snake is shedding. Their eyes will c get a little gloss of gray and like a white. And that's when they're even the, yeah, even the top layer of their eye will turn white because they're shedding even that skin. Yes. And they'll rub off any inanimate objects to get this skin off because it's kind of like an really irritant. Cool, you guys, it's happening right now. Is look at how he's constricting my fingers. This is how he catches his food. And this is how he can eat his food. So he constricts them, makes them so they can't breathe anymore. And then he puts it down his mouth. Can your so fingers breathe anymore? Oh, yeah. He has it constricted me tight enough to actually hurt me. But he's not very happy right now, as you can see. Um, you can he would him. like me to let him down. Okay, thank you very much. Bruce, you're heading out? Thanks a lot for everything, Bruce Wayne. Yeah, thank you. You got my email, so just let me know. You're taking the water bug. All right, quick good question. How do you think snakes move? They don't got legs. So what do you think? What do you think it is? Yes. What they do is you see if you can feel the ribs down there. You can quick just rub. No, no, not. Don't want to be too quick. But no, you can still do it. You feel the ribs, kind of like the rib cage right there. With the thousands of muscles that these snakes have, they will move each rib. That's kind of, and you, you can crawl. We can't do it, of course, because we have arms and legs. I mean, that kind of look, we kind of look silly on the ground slithering around. But these things get by so quickly with the thousands of muscles, you'd be surprised how fast these things can get. Some can get up to like 20 miles an hour, and that's, that's fast. Um, I can't get them off my fingers now. <laughs> I can't stretch them out for you anymore. She's so slow and round. She's not happy. And you can always tell that a snake's n in the gonna strike position. They'll get this little S curve. You ever okay, seen a snake do that before? <laughs> you guys ever seen a snake curl up into an S when they're mad? That's the position of strike. That's when they are angry and they are very mad and you wanna stay away. They'll get in this little position. They'll curl up and put their head about a third of their length out and they'll cur get into an S and you'll hear them. And that's when you know it's to stay away. Other than that, this is the Blue Racer. If you guys would like, you guys, we have a giant water bug in there. I mean, that thing is wicked. Water bug. You can go check it out. There, there, and there's dragonflies and flies over there. Any idea why I have to put gloves on to hold them? What's your? What do you think? It'll dry them out. That's right. Good job. I had. I struggled to get the gloves on last time. I'm going to struggle again today for this. I should just leave them on. Okay, can you look in there and tell me how many frogs, how many types of frogs you see? Can you get a good look in there? Do you see four, three, three types of frogs? And how many did you say? Three. Okay, yeah, there's actually three types of frogs. There's four frogs, but there's only three different kinds. Yeah, I'm gonna try and get them out. They're really tricky. Let's get him first. He's a cool one. It's kind of smelly in there, isn't it? Yeah, this one's pretty cool. This is our tree frog does anyone know what what kind of tree frog it might be no no 
it's an eastern gray tree frog. And we actually can tell because of its markings, because the green and the gray, and because of underneath it here, there's all that yellow. And that's a very good indicator that this is that kind of frog. And I, and did you guys see that big house on the way in here? It was called the Hyla House. And then we actually, it's called the Hyla House because they have a lot of these guys around there. And the genus name or the scientific name for these are Hyla. And I actually found him on my way walking to the house. He hopped out right in front of me and I picked him up. Yep. So that's this guy. He's kind of cute. You see his toes, you can tell if it's a female or a male, his toe has to be larger if it's a male or smaller if it's a female. So what kind, do you think this is a girl or a boy? Girl. A girl? Yep, it is. There's that one. Come here, bud. Ah, oh, they sneaky. Okay, does anyone know what kind of frog this is? <laughs> a frog, yeah. Do you have a guess? No? So this is actually a pickerel frog. And when I first got it, I thought it was a leopard frog because of its spots. But then I looked them up and saw that the spots, see how they go side by side like that? And they're more of a square kind of shape to them? That's a very good indicator that it's a pickerel. And also, they have the yellow underneath too. You see that? And so that also means that it's a pickerel. And also, if we don't have a leopard frog in here, but they're much darker, like a darker green, and it's um, less of a contrast for their spots. And these are more defined. You can see their spots really nicely. So that's our little pickerel. Kind of cute, isn't he? So what kind of frog do you think this one is, the last one that I'm going to get? You want a picture of them? Yeah, they hop around a lot. These, these ones are the tough ones to get. Um, we do have a spring peeper, but these are not. These are our green frogs. And the other group actually said it's because he has a green beard. Isn't that kind of funny? <laughs> so that'd be a good indicator too. But he's real fun. And do you guys know how to tell if it's a male or a female? No. No? I'll give you a clue. It has to do with the ear drum and the eye. Yep. In the female, the eyes are bigger than the ear drum, but in the male, the ear drum is bigger than the eye. So that's a good way to tell. So that's a female? Yep, this is a girl. They're actually, I think, all girls in there. Yep. <laughs> They're having a slumber party, as the last group said. So those are our little green frogs. We have two of those. And they have spots on them, too, but they're not as defined as they would in the other one. And they pooped on me. <laughs> I'll wipe it off. Um, what do you guys think in here? Nope, those are in there. These are our toads. Toads, yep. And, uh, oh, I've seen that kind of toad. Yeah, these ones are very common. They're the American toad. Oh, yeah, um, I see those guys um, a lot when I'm riding my bike. When you're riding your bike? Yeah, and um, we can actually tell because there's two types of toads in Michigan. There's the Fowler toad, and then there's the American toad. And now, do you know how to tell the difference between the two? That one has like those little spines in it. Yeah, it does have to do with their warts, their spots. Now, do you see the black circle underneath? Yeah. Yep. Now, you see how he only has one wart per black circle? In a fowler's toad, they'd have three in one Did black circle. Snake, snake. Did you want to see this one? Yep. And so there's this little guy, and he actually might pee on me. Their bladders were pretty full this morning. You can actually see it's kind of full right there. 
you guys know why they pee, pee on you when you pick them up? Have you ever had that happen? Because they're scared. It also might deter prey or predators from coming after them because it tastes bad and it's kind of stinky. It smells kind of musky. So there's our American toads. We have three of them. They're really kind of interesting. Oh, that's how long, uh, that's how big it's going to get. And same with this. This is the common juniper. No. What's a deciduous? Boy, oh, no, no peeking, no peeking. Okay. Deciduous versus evergreen. Which one? Which ones are evergreens? Yeah, I'm asking him. Yes. Yes, why? are both shrubs because they only grow to a certain height. Okay? Now this is called a spice bush. Anyone know why? <laughs> yeah, pretty much here. I mean, shrubs because they only grow about this tall. Does anyone know what this one is? It's actually a wild rose and a little bit later in the year it'll flower and have roses on it. Now this looks kind of like a tree, which it is, but it only, it's not that big. It's called a wild crab apple. Have you ever seen those those small little nasty looking apples that you don't want to eat? Maybe you have eaten them, got sick, yeah. That's what that is. Okay, you guys should know this one. It comes from a tree. This is an actual tree. Yes, yes it is actually. Because, and this one's a shrub. It's a little bit smaller than this. Um, it grows a little bit under I don't know, 20 feet or so, and it's all just like this. Interesting. Now, this is extremely warm. Have you ever seen this before, guys? Yeah? Okay. It's called a Russian olive, and it's an invasive species. Do you know what that means? What's an invasive species mean? Yeah. Yeah, like it comes in here, and then it kind of messes up the ecosystem. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Now, the funny thing about this is that monarch butterflies and like a lot of these love it, which is weird. But if you look outside, you can see them. They grow anywhere from like 5 feet to about 30 feet tall. So there's quite a variety of sizes. Okay? Alright. Do you guys know anything about dragonflies? Do you know their life cycle? That's their form of metamorphosis. So these actually live in the water. So they'll actually start off as a small leaf. Um, nope, it's actually not that. So it actually looks just like this. So what it is, is that this here is actually their larvae form. It'll actually live in the water. And then as it grows older, when it's old enough to grow out of its shell, it'll actually crawl out of the water, hang onto like a rock or a bridge or something, and then it'll actually crack open, and then it'll emerge just like that. So actually a dragonfly will come out of this right here, kind of like a caterpillar, a cute little butterfly. Um, so this is actually going to be the, the larvae of the baby one. Um, and there's actually two different kinds. You have the dragonflies, and you have the damselflies. So as you can see, these are a lot smaller. Um, and then one other thing is, if you notice, their wings uh, open up differently than this. Because if you look closely, they actually open up behind them, rather than to the side. Do you guys see that? And no, dragonflies do not bite or sting, so they're perfectly harmless, but they are very fat to watch and catch. Very, very fat.
And unfortunately, we probably won't be able to see much of them because the weather. They really don't come out in the cold or the rain. Um, they like it really warm. Um, when they're with Alan, they're all the time. Do you have any questions so far? like the bald faced hornet actually have a really tough finger. Um, those, if they do sting you, actually don't fall off. So these can continuously sting you without dying at all. So if you guys want to. No. When they're dead, they actually don't. They're just kind of like. That's like a crayon. So this is actually a. So if you want to take a look at it, actually this thing is very vicious. Um, oh no, these things live in the water. Um, they're actually, their common name is called the toe biter. Um, so as people walk through the water, they actually feel like a bite on their toe. And this thing is an active predator in the pond. This thing will eat fish, bugs, spiders, almost anything. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, come here. they do is they cling on to rocks and things like that, so that when something comes by, they'll actually come out and go grab it. So yeah. Ready to go? Well, everybody, I want to thank you guys for coming down to Pierce Cedar Creek on our last uh, biodiversity boutique of this semester. And I hope you're stimulated to go out and look for snakes and frogs and ferns and whatever else. And always ask questions. Remember that. Always ask questions because even though we think we know all the answers, we really don't know all the answers. So I want to thank you again for coming. And all my students from Grand Rapids Community College and all the students from Stepping Stones Montessori for making this possible. And to Dr. Bruce Grant from Widener University in Pennsylvania. So until next semester, we'll see you guys for a great summer, okay?